I really thought that this nation was ready to move forward from our days of segregation when Barack Obama was elected as president of the United States of America. Regardless of his politics and how do you feel about some of his decisions that he's made, this was an African American who was voted president of the entire United States of America, meaning there's a lot of Anglos and other ethnic groups besides African Americans that voted for him as president. So I thought as much as we needed racial reconciliation in America, I really thought that was the opportunity for our nation to come together and make us one as a nation. But unfortunately, you know and I know that's not the case. I think it has gotten even worse as a result of uh, what we've seen in recent years uh, in America. However, I still believe we can move forward by understanding and realizing that racism, segregation was a part of our past, but that's the thing, it's our past. Some way, somehow, we as believers and as Christians and as the body of Christ must come together and be that role model and example to the world that we can address the serious issue of race, of segregation, of all the other things that have uh, affected our country for years, and we can show the world through our love for each other that God loves the people of the world. Red, yellow, black, and white, we are precious in his sight. And we as a congregation and as a church and as believers in the body of Christ need to model that before the world. I heard a pastor friend of mine in uh, Philadelphia explains it this way. America doesn't have a skin problem. We have a sin problem. And when we deal with our sin problem, we will understand that we're all the same in the sight of God. And that's where I think the church can step in at. The church needs to be that role model and example uh, of what we can do together as individuals. That's why I love the, being a part of churches and going to churches where in the worship services you have all ethnic groups there, whites, blacks, Asian, Hispanics coming together. Because in reality, if we say we love God the way that we do, that's what heaven's going to look like. So until we get there, we need to start practicing it here in America. And that's why I feel that the church can be the agents of social change by exemplifying and also showing the world what it means to come together as brothers and sisters, regardless of your race, regardless of what side of the track you were born on, regardless of all the things that the media and society has tried to do to divide us. We can be one. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that says the world will know that we're one by our love for one another. As a African-American pastor in a predominantly Anglo convention, the question of race always comes up. Um, as a matter of fact, when I decided to run for president of this convention, media from all across the world, literally, not just the country, the world, came here to New Orleans to interview me, and every last one of them asked this question. Why would a black man want to be president of a convention that started as a result of slavery. So I cannot escape the fact that I am an African American in a convention that was started as a result of slavery. And so that race question will always come up just because of our past as a convention. I don't mind dealing with it. I don't mind talking about it. And the things that I told each of those uh, reporters is that, listen, all of us have a past. I've got a past. You've got a past. Every last one of us have a past. We regret the past of this convention. This convention has publicly apologized for our past at several conventions that I've been a part of. Uh, we've made it known through uh, uh, resolutions that we want this convention to be more uh, uh, diverse, and it is. I believe the Southern Baptist Convention is the most diverse convention in any convention in America. When it comes to Anglos, Hispanics, Asian, African Americans, there is no other convention that comes close to our diversity in the Southern Baptist Convention. But we've got to get to the point, hopefully, that one day that will not be an issue. The issue needs to be, what are we doing in evangelism? What are we doing in discipleship? What are we doing in reaching the lost and changing this world? That's what I pray will happen. We're not there yet. And as I've told folk all the time, when it comes to things like dealing with race and reconciliation, it's going to be a part of our history, it's going to be a part of our conversation. 
And we will hopefully get to the point where that's not even an issue, where I can go to a church, an Anglo church, a Hispanic church, uh, Asian church, and be introduced not as the first African-American president, but be introduced as this is our brother, Fred Luda. That's my prayer for this convention and for America. I will be, as pastor of a local church, forever be grateful to New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. I grew up National Baptist, so I didn't know anything about the Southern Baptist Convention, about the seminaries, the six seminaries that we have across. I did not find about find out about these seminaries, and particularly New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, until I became pastor of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, which is a Southern Baptist uh, congregation. Through my relationships back then with uh, the president at the time, Dr. Level, and other professors that I met when I came here uh, as a student, I began to appreciate all that this seminary had to offer us as a small mission church in the inner city of New Orleans. This seminary gave us access uh, to the library, gave us access to uh, classrooms where we can come and train our leaders uh, in leadership conferences and evangelism conferences, uh, of course, being part of the chapel services and all the, we even had access to the gym at one time and several times to have overnight uh, lock-ins for our young people. Uh, it was just a great, great, great partnership between a local African-American church and a New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. I also think we've been a blessing to uh, this seminary. Franklin Avenue Doors have always been open to all the students and the faculty of uh, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Dr. Kelly allows me to come preach every semester here at uh, chapel services, and I always personally invite the students and the uh, staff here to come on over to Franklin Avenue. Uh, before you leave New Orleans, make sure you come and worship because there are a lot of Anglos who come here who never worship in that predominantly African-American church before. And that's our opportunity to have them to come and be a part of uh, our services at Franklin Avenue. And I think it's a win-win situation with New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary has meant to Franklin Avenue and also what Franklin Avenue Baptist Church has meant to uh, uh, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary through the chapel services, through the students, through Mission Lab, where a lot of the young people come and worship with us. It's just a, a great partnership that I'm just grateful to be a part of.